Hi, good afternoon. My name is Yvonne Ankerman. I am a passionate travel sketcher and today I would like to show you what I carry around with me. I work as artist in residence on board expedition ships and so obviously can't carry a lot with me when I go on board. So we travel all over the world in quite unusual and remote places and um, Luggage is always a problem on different flights and that. So I'm going to show you today what I have in my, in my travel sketchbook. Well, in my sketch pack, should I say. So this is the little bag I have. It's got a, a wonderful little strap that I can put around my waist, but it also fits uh, over my, my shoulder. So it's nice and light to take with me. Uh, inside, I mean, it's actually a lot fits in here and it's, it's a nice light, something to have. This is my palette. I like to choose my own colors out of tubes and then I will squeeze them in my palette before I go, make sure they slightly, they're still moist, but slightly hard enough to um, carry with me properly. This is the little size sketchbook that I normally can fit in there. It's about an A5. You can see all the different places that I've managed to fit into that little book. And that, I think that is a British made one, not a moleskin, but here is uh, one of the French, I think it's a Hanna, I think it's a Hanna Muller sketchbook with brown paper, same sort of size. Anything that you can fit in this little pouch is great to, to carry around with you. The brown paper is especially nice if you, want to add little highlights with, uh, with gouache. The various brushes that I have are there. I will uh, go through them in a minute. And of course, some kitchen towel, always to dab something, a little spray bottle. And this is for just spraying your paper wet or keeping your, your palette wet. I do carry a bigger, a bigger spray bottle as well, but only if there's space. So it's my little collapsible uh, water container. And then of course, all the various pens that I would use with my watercolor either before or afterwards. And my little bottle of ink to use with dip pens when, when needed and if there's space. I use a quite an old, just a handy Andy, that's like a cleaning bottle uh, if it's empty. So anything from your cupboard, they, these spray nozzles are really good. Uh, you're using the plastic more than once, which is wonderful. It's not all thrown away straight away. And it's the big spray bottle is great for wetting your paper beforehand. The little one is more for traveling. If you actually sitting out and doing some plein air sketching, the little one would be more than enough. I like to spray my palette before I begin, just in case it, things had dried out a little bit, just to, to have them wet again and just get them ready for painting. Various pencils, I have anything from a 2B, 4B, 6B, something like that. And then a water soluble pencil, which is wonderful to make sort of grayscale drawings. What you do is you can uh, wet on top of it and it just spreads the graphite around a little bit. So it's a, a lot more than a normal pencil. A normal pencil won't really uh, move the graphite, but this special pencil is, is wonderful just to add uh, a little bit of texture. And it's what's not, what I like about it is the actual pencil lines show through as well. It just adds a little bit more texture to the, to the whole thing. This pencil, uh, I have used it for so many years, the name is actually off it, but they've got, they're wonderful. They've actually got a, um, a lead that comes in a pack of six or eight in a pack. And what I like about it is that you can just pop the lead straight back into the, uh, into the protective coating of the pencil. So these are the graphite ones and then you have, uh, I think you had different various colors. These, these ones are like a burnt sienna type of color. Nice for more earthy things and uh, great to pack away without losing the nib of the pencil. I bought it in Paris many years ago 
and it's very, very handy. My old trusty toothbrush, great for textures, uh, even to paint with it, making unusual marks. I'm just gonna show you a little bit what kind of things you can do with it. So you can spray around, just add. This is great for maybe um, having things like adding rocks and sand at the bottom of a little beach scene or just in general with flowers, adding a little bit of texture with it. My mop brush, I love. It, may, it absorbs a lot of water and it makes a really nice thick, thick line up to a thin line. I use that most of the time for anything sort of medium to small size. I use a, a bigger brush. I prefer that to, uh, to a thinner brush like this that I'm using now. It just has, I don't know, it just, I like things to look a little bit more loose, should I say. So I don't like it to be too precise and too, too exact or too much in the lines. A, a flat brush is very, very handy for your uh, graded washers. It covers a big area at a time and adding different colors to that. It just it has a very quick, very quick wash effect. So always try and go with slightly bigger brushes than what you think you will need for your, for your project. Another synthetic brush, quite handy, sort of medium, medium size, really small. I really don't, I don't have this water pen that uh, there you fill up the little container with water. I don't use it that, that often, but they are very handy. So you just have to squeeze a little bit, pick up your paint, and then they give you quite nice, sharp, strong lines. To clean it, you don't even have to use your water container to clean it. You can just take your paper towel, press it a bit, press the pigment out, and then go to your next color and put it down. So great if you only have one brush, that's maybe, maybe nice. If you don't have too much space for your water container, this sort of thing is just ideal. I carry gouache around with me a lot, especially for the brown paper. My putty eraser, that's wonderful. It doesn't leave the, the sort of little bits of uh, rubber effect from a normal eraser that you have. This rubs out really, really clean and it doesn't have those little bits of rubber that you then have to scatter around the floor, or whatever. This is what it looks like in the packet if you would get it at the shop. Sharpener, of course, I always have in my bag as well. This is my little waterproof ink for my dip pens. And I will show you a bit of a demonstration with that as well. I keep, I use any containers that I have. I keep various things in there. So these are pretty inexpensive. You can buy a set that has about six nibs. I tend to prefer the slightly thicker nib pen, but the, the lovely thin ones make wonderful lines. This, this I like because you can get a sort of thicker flat line and then you turn it on its side and it can make a smaller line. So it is very practical to take with wherever you go and it really doesn't take much space. You can also pick up just wet watercolor paint, use it in your dip pen. So if you pick up that is now purple color, but if you had orange or pink or whatever, it would pick up that color and you can make uh, outlines. And it just makes that, gives that a little bit of a variety to not always just have the black paint. I have other ink in different colors. I bought a few last time I was in Paris. I'm not sure what make this is, but they, not, they, they do smudge when they get wet, which sometimes leaves a really nice effect. So as long as you know it does that, then you can work with it. So you just dip your, your pen in there and it, it makes wonderful lines. And it keeps, holds quite a lot of ink and it's great to use. Just make sure you always clean it before you pack it away, otherwise the ink will dry in that uh, little nib there. 
These are now um, something I discovered only a few years ago. They called Neo Colors. And it almost looks like a wax crayon. And it feels like a wax crayon. So it doesn't really feel like a pastel. It really feels waxy to the, uh, to the touch. And you basically draw lines or color in a little bit with it. And then you take some water on a brush and you can smooth out the color. And it, is a, it just works really nicely. So it leaves a little bit of that line behind but most of it is dissolved by the water and you can blend the colors together as well. It is really nice for a bit of detail on top of a watercolor that's maybe already finished that you just want to add a little highlight here or there or just add a little bit of texture. So I really enjoy using them. I don't have that many of them, but it's great fun. This is my bag that I use to carry everything in if I'm going out for the day, just up and around. So I've got an extra little book there, extra tissues, and then of course not forgetting your sun hat. And even my little fold up chair fits in there. Everything all packed together fits in and it's, it just works wonderfully well. And that is basically it. So you really don't need a lot of things. I hope you're going to get your kit together and uh, it's really nice if it's organized and always in one place that whenever you want to go sketching that you can just pick up that bag and, and off you go and you know everything is in there and it really doesn't have to be heavy. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, will join me again for another little demonstration at some stage and we will see you again.